happened is we have a featured performance, performer, singer songwriter, Sarah Banley, who will be in the spotlight. And before she, um, we have a, a video clip of her playing. Um, I just want to read you a little bio about Sarah because for those of us in Country Dance New York, we don't know Sarah that well because she's not been in the group. She's only been in the group for five years, which in like country dance terms is not very long. And uh, so she plays the piano for English dances. But here's some information about Sarah. Uh, Sarah believes in the goodness of all mankind, but she keeps the piano in her back pocket just in case. She writes uh, new songs that sound like classic folk uh, and country, and she never met a violin she didn't like. Her debut album of traditional music from Ireland and the British Isles, the folk EP, won an award from Sing Out magazine and was featured in their 2011 spring quarterly edition. Her newest app, uh, album, Secrets to Tell, contains her original folk material along with her innovative arrangements of traditional folk songs and is available on Bandcamp and on other streaming platforms. So um, you're going to have the pleasure of listening to Sarah Banley and Matthew Christian play two tunes, a Scottish reel, Loch Torrenden, and an Irish hornpipe, The Red-Haired Boy. All right, here we go. Thank you. 
Sarah and Matthew. That was fantastic. What, what great tunes to hear. That was really, really wonderful. So for those of you that don't know, the way that is recorded is that Sarah lays down a track on this acapella program, and then she sends the file to Matthew, and then Matthew listens to it on earphones, and then he lays down a track. So they're not even together at all. So it's a very interesting, uh, challenging thing. And you'll see later on in the evening, there are four of us doing that. So it's, it's, um, it's really, really fun. Now, Matthew, uh, who was playing the fiddle there, um, I want to just read you a little bit about what Matthew said about himself, all right? Matthew grew up in rural southern Vermont, and a dominant theme of his last decade has been figuring out what on earth to do in this gigantic city. Uh, he's been a busker, a high school teacher, an adjunct English professor, and with any luck, a once and future full-time fiddle player. He once heckled Bernie Sanders as a misled neoliberal youth. <laughs> I'd love to have seen that. <laughs> and is a fairly fluent speaker of Wolof, which is the main language of Senegal. So that I'm sure will come in very, be a very important thing at some point. All right. So, all right. So now we have a really fun section called the messy kitchen. And in the messy kitchen is a cook who is going to teach us how to make shepherd's pie. So today's chef is concertina player Jody Kreskel. And I actually don't have to introduce him at all because in the first video, there'll be three videos to show how he makes his amazing shepherd's pie. In his first video, he will introduce himself. So take it away, Jody. So poor Galen has to go from one video to the next. So he's trying to do that right now. Here we go. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jody Kruskal, and I want to shout out to all my dancing friends who aren't dancing. What a shame. And uh, you might know me from uh, as the concertina player in Grand Picnic and uh, Strumbo Squeeze Blow, The Dress Ship, and, and um, uh, Squeezology, and I have a lot of bands. But anyway, I'm going to cook tonight, um, and the, the most important ingredient uh, when you cook is uh, a glass of wine and, and music. Well, let's have some music. All right. Now, here's all of our ingredients. I just want to point out what we've got. We're going to, we, you need a knife, cutting board, and lots of vegetables and some meat. Um, but you also need two pots. We're going to use this one to cook the cottage pie. Ooh, cottage pie. It's like shepherd's pie, but instead of lamb, you've got beef. So cottage pie. And when I make it with ground turkey, we call it pilgrim pie, just for fun. So you need two pots. And uh, let me show you all these ingredients. We've got the, uh, the potatoes. For, basically, it's mashed potatoes we're going to make. And then we've got, um, uh, we're going to start by sauteing the onion and then chop all these other vegetables and stick them in there along with some seasonings, uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, Worcester sauce, Worcestershire sauce. And then I like to use, um, I like to use uh, this wonderful goat milk kefir, or if you prefer, kefir. This is fabulous stuff in the mashed potatoes, you see, it's got a lot of flavor. First, the potatoes. Now, I like to cook my potatoes, uh, for mashed potatoes, with the um, skins on. I don't peel the skins off, but I do trim off the eyes. All right, let's get these on the stove. Next thing I want to do is the onions, because uh, I want to get them started first. So, uh, here we go. Also, a nice dash of olive oil. The interesting thing about this recipe is there is no recipe. It's just whatever vegetables you got handy, but onions are important, and uh, the parsley is pretty important, and the Worcester sauce is crucial. Potatoes boiling over there, and now we got the onions. I'm going to get these going too. Here we go. Uh, other vegetables like these beautiful carrots. Oh, 
There's another one. These vegetables in the pot. Cut up the squash. All right. <laughs> what so, ingredient was that last thing? Um, Jody, you can tell us actually. I think Jody's here. Here, yeah. Oh, uh, what? What? The last ingredient was yeah. was cauliflower. No, no, no. We haven't gotten to the cauliflower yet. Oh, okay. No, I, I just yeah. meant what? What? What ingredient was that cone thing? When the video stopped. The track oh, you know what it was? It's um, carrots and celery and mushroom. Those, those are the three things. One mushroom, one lonely one mushroom. One mushroom, yeah. Mushroom got cut, right? <laughs> hey, Cynthia, you, yeah. did this, you did this editing, right? I did the editing, yeah. Good job so far. Don't, don't want to hear the rest. <laughs> what do you mean only one mushroom? <laughs> Artie, it's all I had. <laughs> Anyway, you'll, we'll, we'll hear more. You'll, you'll, you'll see more. There are two more episodes, so we'll really find out how to make this shepherd's pie, which I want to make really good. Okay, any anyway, myself. All right. Hey, hey so, it's, uh, it's cottage pie. Cottage, cottage pie. pie. All right. Shep okay. All right. But you call it shepherd's pie in the video, so that's why I called it shepherd's pie. Anyway, so now it's time for a word from our sponsor. Hmm. Oompa is our sponsor. Here we go, Oompa. Tonight's program brought to you by Oompa, <laughs> the organization of musical professionals and heroes. Oompa. <laughs> Thank you, Oompa. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> that was great. All right. So now I'd like to take us back to our featured performer, again, Sarah Banley, who will actually perform two songs for us live. One of them is The Water is Wide and the other is um, Wild Mountain Time, one of my absolute favorite songs, actually. Um, and I just want to read, tell you a fun fact about Sarah that we found out last night when we were in our dress rehearsal is that when Sarah was a graduate student at Yale University, she was forced to take economics, which she did not want to take. And she had no interest in economics at all. So it was difficult for her, it was a hard class for her. And she admitted that oftentimes in class, she had no idea what was going on. So this past week when she was working on tech with Galen, she realized that sound design was even harder than economics class. <laughs> So let's hear Sarah perform live, The Water is Wide and Wild Mountain Time. Take it away, Sarah. Hi, everybody. I'm joining audio right now. Jalen, am I joining audio? You are not. OK, there we go. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much to CDNY for uh, putting this together. And thank you all for joining us on the video. Uh, I'm gonna do two songs today, as Cynthia said. One is The Water is Wide, and the second one is Wild Mountain Time, also known as Will You Go, Lassie Go. Um, so The Water is Wide, I, I wanna talk a little bit about how I um, first came upon that song and what it means to me and uh, just the way I've performed it over the years. So um, The Water is Wide is one of those very famous, very old folk songs that has found its way into many, many different uh, genres or styles of music. Um, so it's originally from Scotland, but it became very popular here in the United States uh, with Appalachian settlers and uh, in the Irish and Scottish community. And it also has found its way into Protestant hymnals and in the African-American spiritual uh, songs, uh, the canon of African American spirituals. Um, the way I came about it was just through, you know, being in the folk community, having a lot of folk books, listening to a lot of folk albums. Um, I, I really connected with that song the first time I ever um, heard it, played it, and um, sang it. 
what happened was I realized uh, it's a, such a good song for busking because it, the melody is so strong and uh, you can sing it a cappella, and it's, it sounds beautiful and it sounds vibrant. So I used to busk with that in the New York City subways all the time. <laughs> so if you were in the New York City subways uh, between like 2010 and 2016, I was busking with the water is wide and it, it got a great response from people. Um, people used to wait till I was done with my set and they would come up to me and they would say how much they liked the song and how much it meant to them. And it was very moving. Um, so it is a very, very special song. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about NEFA, New England Folk Festival Association. I, um, I was a featured performer for NEFA, um, I think for two years, where I showed audiences how to translate traditional folk music that's typically either sung a cappella or played on string instruments um, for piano. And uh, they sent me an email a couple of months ago uh, talking about how they're doing this um, great uh, asynchronous uh, mass music project. And they wanted everybody on these four songs and they were gonna put all these different videos and audio tracks together. One of the songs is The Water is Wide. And when I saw that, I thought, oh my God, The Water is Wide. I have not done that in so long. So I, um, I pulled out my old uh, arrangement of it and I was just kind of fooling around with it for a few weeks. And I thought, uh, this is a really, really great song for the CDNY Live because I can do it on piano and I can, I can sing it and do my arrangement of it. Uh, so NEFA is, um, I think it's happening in April and they're going to have the asynchronous videos, I think ready before then or, or during that time, but I definitely recommend you check them out because they are such a cool organization. Okay. So this is the water is wide. I hope you enjoy it and, uh, feel free to comment or ask any questions in the chat and I will read that, uh, later. Before I start, I'm just going to do a tiny test. Um, Galen, tell me if everything sounds good on your end. Yeah, yeah. Do you have original sound turned on? Let me double check. Wow, I did, and then it, um, it turned itself off. Okay. Thank God we checked. Turn it back on, please. Yeah. How's that? Uh, I think that's better. Okay, I see Chip Prince nodding. Hi, Chip. <laughs> that means it sounds good. Okay. This is the water is wide.
So that was the water is wide. Um, how are we doing on sound? I, I just want to check in. Sarah, okay, turn great. your game down just a, turn your game down just a little bit. Great. Okay. Thanks, Galen. Um, as long as I'm here turning down the gain, that's my little my Motu M4 that I just got um, to help me do the concert. I wanna I wanna point to this little Calancho plant. <laughs> I put it on the piano, and I will tell you why. This is the first time. This plant has bloomed in two years. Um, so I wanted to share with everybody because um, I'm, I'm just so happy that it's blooming and it's um, really beautiful and, and pink. And um, the crazy thing is um, that came out of some cuttings. The original plant just like wasn't flowering anymore. And I planted the cuttings a couple of months ago and here it is. <laughs> so I, ho I hope you like that. Um, Okay, so the next song is Wild Mountain Time, also known as Will You Go, Lassie Go, and I, I just want to talk a little bit about the story of the song. This song was introduced to me by the parents of uh, a student that I used to teach piano and voice to. They are really, really into folk music, and they're, they're just all around great uh, musicians and artists, and they knew that I was into Irish and Scottish and English um, traditional folk songs. And they said, uh, do you know, will you go lassie go? And I did not know it. And I said, no, I, I don't know it. And they encouraged me to check it out. And I did, and I was just so stunned. It is so beautiful. Um, and I, I did a little bit more research on it. And um, from what I can gather, just by doing some online research, it seems that um, the melody is an old traditional, it's a traditional melody, but the words are relatively new and they were composed by um, or written by a, North, a Northern Irish um, writer slash singer. Uh, so I did not know that. And I also didn't know that the, the lyrics are, are only um, a few decades old. I, I, I don't know if my, my information is correct, but um, that's what I saw um, recently. So um, if you know more about it, please let me know. Um, enter your comments in the chat um, because I would love to know more about the song. So um, I performed this song only, I think, once or twice live in a live set. And then um, about two years ago, one of my good friends asked if I would sing uh, an Irish song, a Gaelic song, Irish or Scottish, at her wedding. And... Um, I was so happy to do so, but I had to think, what is a happy Irish song? <laughs> I had to think of a happy Irish romantic song. Um, there are a lot of 
um, happy Irish tunes, but their um, their drinking songs or their marching songs or their or their um, work songs keeping time. So I tried to think of of a beautiful and a happy Irish tune, Irish ballad, and um, I thought of Wild Mountain Time. Will you go, Lassie, go? And with a couple of adjustments that I made to the lyrics and the arrangements, uh, it turns out it could be a very, very beautiful, happy, and tender tune. So I sang that um, at her wedding two years ago, and she absolutely loved it. And uh, it's it's been a very special song for me since then, um, because I was so happy to to make her happy on on her special day. So uh, I usually have sung this a cappella but I translated a version for a piano that I've been working on for, for a little while. And, um, and I hope you like it. This is Wild Mountain Time, Will You Go, Lassie Go. It was so beautiful, Sarah. Thank wow, you. that was just pretty awesome. You she'll, when you see, you'll see all the comments that people were writing, how lovely your voice is, and how they could just listen to you sing all day long. So um, that that was just really, really great. So thank you for sharing those songs and your beautiful playing. That was that was lovely. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks so much to CDNY, um, to all the producers of the show, to Cynthia for hosting. Um, and also to Galen, <laughs> I know we thanked him so much, but I, I just need to say he is so special 
Um, Galen, thank you so much. Without his tech help, I promise you none of, none of this could have happened. <laughs> um, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Galen, and thanks to CDNY, and thanks everybody for joining. Great job. Thank you, thank you. All right, so now I know all of you are dying to know more about this shepherd's pie and making it. So before we go on to our next video from Chef Jody, I just want to read you a couple of things about Jody. So Jody rides his bike around Prospect Park almost every day, which is like a huge thing, I think. It's amazing. Almost every night he plays uh, with uh, Pittsburgh auto harpist Cindy Harris using jazz cam. So he pl makes music with someone in Pittsburgh. Um, he learned cooking from his mom, uh, who was an elementary school teacher. Um, and the music, I just want to tell you, the music playing in the background of the videos is from one of his bands, Grand Picnic, which is a contra dance band. And many of us have spent many, many, many joyful dances dancing to Grand Picnic um, at CDNY at uh, Metropolitan Duane. So um, you'll hear some Grand Picnic in the background. So just really wonderful, joyous music. Um, John, uh, as I said, Jody plays the concertina. And not only does he play it, he lives it and breathes it. All right, so let's hear, let's see a little bit more about making that um, shepherd's pie. Maybe just a, a piece, a little piece. That's best way to do this. How about this? Ooh, that's hard. Gonna go in the pot. Well, I love that sizzle. Isn't that nice? Can you hear that? Mmm, yummy. Yeah, that's easy, though. Just mix it up a little bit. And, uh, now for the uh, the, the, the stems. There we go. Okay, let's get these cauliflower stems going. I used to throw these away, but um, I, 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 someone told me that they were good to eat, so I've been eating them ever since in this our tomato sauce. Ooh, I like Dave's Gourmet Wild Mushroom Sauce au Champagne uh, Sauvage. So the vegetables are still roasting and uh, just a tiny bit of salt in there and, and then pepper and uh, you can't really have too much pepper. Is it possible? Well, maybe it's possible, but a good, healthy amount. And let's see how they're browning. Oh yeah, look, that's nice. See, see I'll take a good look at how the vegetables are browning a little bit. It's very important to uh, develop flavor through this um, browning of the vegetables. Um, now they got a little ways to go. So, see you in a minute. <laughs> okay, so we're seeing more and more of what, how the shepherd's pie is being made, so I can hardly wait for the final third video. All right, so now it's time for our skit. So our skit tonight is performed, our comedy skit is performed by the contra dance band Torrent, uh, whose members are Ross Parker on the piano, Sarah, Sarah Stefanski on the fiddle, and Nadia Gaia on the accordion. So let's see what these little tricksters are up to. Hey Torrent, what a great sunny day in the park. It's so beautiful out. It's, it's only 60 degrees. Wow, cool. Let's play some music. Sounds awesome.
the park. It's so, such a beautiful day out today. It's only 40 degrees. Oh man, 40 degrees? How cold is this? Can we keep playing? Is it getting too cold? Why not? Let's make some music. Let's find out. <laughs> It's 20 degrees out. Oh man, 20 degrees. They're calling for snow later today. Think Let's we play can... some tunes before the snowstorm starts. Let's get some tunes in before the snow. Sounds good to me. I wonder if I can play with gloves on. I don't know. I can't. I'm out. Yeah, let's go for it. like neither snow nor sleet nor freezing rain can keep torrent from their musical endeavors. See you soon! See you soon! <laughs> it's even colder, but it turns out maybe I can play in giant mittens. Can I try it? Yeah, nice mittens, Sarah. <laughs> Torrent. Now we know it is actually possible to play a contradance tune on the fiddle with mittens on. Like, who knew? <laughs> oh my goodness, that was pretty awesome. All right, so now we finally get to see how our shepherd's pie turns out. So our final video from Jody the Chef is him finishing up the beautiful shepherd's pie. So here we go. All right, so the vegetables have been cooked and then I pushed them up to the top of the pan and browned the meat. So that's all done. I like this round chopper. This is the round chopper I use, that my mother used, <laughs> it's old. So now, just a couple of seasonings, a tiny little bit of honey, and a dash of Worcester dash or five of Worcester sauce and then maybe I guess half of this okay I'm gonna give that a stir the chopped parsley yeah we'll put that in there now I'm gonna do the potatoes they've been cooking and I'm gonna done and of course how long do you cook the potatoes well you just Get a fork and see, no, they're done. They're soft enough. So what I like to do 
is save the potato water for soup. So here I go, I've got my, my jar all ready to go. And I'm gonna put in, before I finish that, I'm gonna put in some butter. That's probably smashed enough. Here's the key for portion of this. This mashed potatoes is looking really good. And um, yeah, let's get this a stir. There we go. So um, the next step is to take the mashed potatoes and put it on top. And I'm gonna spread it like this. Get some nice lines, some nice ridges. I'm gonna put a little bit of paprika. Sprinkle it on like this, just to give it a little color. Into the oven it goes. 350. Yeah, or it could be approximate 350. Um, it's it's all cooked. I just want to like let it incorporate and um, sit there and have all those flavors blend. And uh, it'll be done when in a half an hour, say. Let's see if this turn it up a little bit. I'm hungry. I want to eat dinner. All right, our cottage pie is almost done. I actually did put a little butter on the top after all. And um, because we're in a hurry, because we're hungry, and it's time to eat, um, I actually put it under the broiler, turn that oven off, just for a couple of minutes to kind of give it a little extra color. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? The nice thing about cottage pie or uh, shepherd's pie or pilgrim pie is that it's, it's a whole meal in a pot, so that, that's kind of nice. You know, it's got the starch, and it's got the meat, it's got lots of vegetables, and um, it's delicious. So I could serve this with a salad, but nope, not tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Oh my gosh. Everybody is now, everybody knows how to make cottage pie, right? He makes it look so easy and just so fantastic. So I'm very excited to buy all these ingredients and get my kefir and my vodka um, uh, tomato sauce and make amazing, amazing cottage pie. So Jody, thank you so, so much. Well, believe it or not, it's the end of our program. I can't believe it. It's over. So I would like to give you just a little quick look ahead about what's happening on the next four Thursdays. Um, this next Thursday, January 21st, um, is English Dance Lore, and the presenter will actually be yours truly, me. Um, I'll be playing uh, English country, country dance tunes um, and having stories that go with the tunes that I've, uh, my own stories, not the tune stories, but my own stories that have inspired me about these particular tunes. So I'm very excited about that. Um, then on January 28th, um, we will have another CDNY Live and our guest, special guest will be Zara Lawler and her band. And Zara is a, a flute player and she's totally amazing. She, um, yeah, she's a great flute player and she does all sorts of fantastic stuff. So. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what she brings to us. And we will have woodworker Glenn Doherty and journalist Marisa Nicosia. So they will um, give us some really interesting stuff about woodworking and journalism. Then um, on the next Thursday, February 4th, I can't believe it's almost February, uh, we have dance lore, English dance lore with Beverly Francis. Um, and then finally, on Thursday, February 11th, CDNY Live will have another evening. Um, the program as yet is to be determined, so we don't know yet. But anyway, I encourage you. So, it, which means just come every Thursday um, and you'll have lots of fun. I want to thank again our producers, Annie Eden and Dominique Gagne, our tech director, Galen Kirkpatrick, our musicians, Sarah Banley, Matthew Christian, Dominique Gagne, um, our band, Torrent, and our chief concertina player, uh, Jody Kruskal. And many, many, many thanks to, uh, to Country Dance New York for this evening. So finally, we have a final dance party. Now, before Galen puts the dance music on, I would like to encourage everyone to get up out of your seats and dance. 
You can keep it simple. You can do -si do You can walk around. You can dance with your chair. You can do whatever. But just so you get moving with the music. All right. And if you want to see everybody else dancing, um, go up to the upper left hand corner and press gallery view. And then you'll see everybody who um, is on the, um, the Zoom call and you can feel like you're dancing with, with them all together. And if you're on your phone, you just swipe uh, left on your phone and you'll start seeing everybody. Um, so we have a band tonight of four people, um, uh, uh, Sarah Banley, Dominique Gagne, Matthew Christian, and me playing the piano. Uh, we'll be playing three O'Carrollon tunes, The Fairy Queen, Frank Palmer, which is uh, the tune for a dance called Algorithms, and Hugh O'Connell, which is for a dance called Wibsy Roundabout. So everybody stand up. I'm going to stand up. <coughs> you can see my, my thing there. Everybody stand up while Galen puts the music on and we can all dance to this lovely, lovely, lovely music. So thank you all for coming tonight.
much for being here thank you for sharing the evening with us we're really glad you were here um, thank you so much and thank you for all the people who watched on Facebook as well so I know that there are people there so thank you all and 